Hello and welcome back to another gold making video. This is part 2 in the series where we cover gold making in both Classic and BFA, and without further introduction let's just get right into it. In Classic right now there is quite a lot going on. Battlegrounds has just come out, world bosses have been out for quite a while, Dire Maul has affected the market quite a bit, and people are starting to get bored of max level content. On top of this, Christmas is coming up, meaning people will have more spare time. This would, in my opinion, be the very best time to start selling off your twink items in Classic WoW. You should see items like Shadow Fang and Assassin's Blade going up in demand and getting more expensive, and also higher level twink items like Staff of Jordan should also start seeing a rise in value. Value. It's the perfect combination of everything happening all at once, and even though you can speculate that twink items might sell better later on, I think this is the perfect time. Because Battlegrounds have just come out, this might also be the perfect opportunity to flip certain flasks or potions, or even elixirs. I myself will try to flip potions used by twinks and utility potions. I will mostly go for swiftness potions, thistle tea for rogues, and rage potions for warriors. In addition to this, I expect free action potions to see a small spike in price as well, however this all depends on how many people invested in these items already and how many other people will try to flip them. When it comes to gold farming in Classic WoW the best way to go is probably raw gold farming, boost runs for certain items or dire mall runs. Which type of dire mall run you should do depends on your class and professions but having at least herbalism or mining is recommended to increase your gold per hour. Your best bet would be leveling up a mage to 60 if you don't already have one, and farm Sulfaric or Dire Maul until you go crazy and delete the game. Additionally, you can also level up a rogue as that opens up lockpicking options and pickpocketing, which is also a very nice gold per hour, plus it's a different way to make gold which keeps the game interesting. Rogues can also skip past trash mobs and go straight to bosses to sell boss loot in certain dungeons or farm certain recipes. They can for example sell the Hand of Justice, which was very popular to sell, to people early on in Classic. If mages and rogues aren't your thing, I have two big videos on great gold farms in Classic WoW covering different gold farming locations all throughout Azeroth, as well as a top 5 gold farms in Classic WoW video which I made very recently. Alternatively, if you want to farm elite mobs in a group, watch my Secret World Farms in Classic WoW video as well. As a statement that kinda goes for Classic and BFA, I would strongly advise you to take advantage of your free level 110 boost and BFA copy upon hitting level 60 in Classic. Even if you don't like BFA, you might end up liking Shadowlands or some future expansion and deals like this don't come along often. Right now, there is also a Battleground event going on in BFA where you can level up characters stupidly fast. Like 110 to 120 takes roughly 5 hours depending if you win or lose and queue times. In my experience and as an alliance player, queues are 3 minutes and we lose 75% of the time and for me it average, the average time to go from 110 to 120 is, in this event is 5 hours, which for most people is faster than questing. This is a small time investment to set yourself up for the future. And by using my gold making guides for BFA, you can literally play Classic for free by purchasing WoW tokens with gold on BFA. My recommendation is boost either a monk or a druid to 110 with your free boost for gold making purposes, since monks and druids are insanely good for gold making. Then level up a demon hunter through the battleground event. This way, you'll have two level 120s in, an, in a day. After that you can keep leveling new alts as well, but note that the battleground event really only works at level 60 plus, since you get way less experience when you're under 60 for some reason. A third character that would be good here would be the death knight, since they also start at a higher level. For this battleground event, if your faction is experiencing a very long queue time, try going to the Legion version of Dalaran, go to the sewers, and talk to a battleground recruiter there to activate mercenary mode, which lets you play for the opposite faction and see if that lowers the queue time. This is an excellent event to level up a couple of characters to set yourself up for the future. In BFA right now, we're still waiting for 8.3 and it's time to make some preparations. This is the perfect time to invest in raw materials that will be used in 8.3 as prices for materials are at an all time low. This is the time to invest in for example herbs to make flasks and potions in 8.3, enchanting materials to make new enchants in 8.3 and so on. Here it's all about thinking what will be profitable. For example, let's say 5000 people invest in herbs to turn into potions or flasks 
the supply there will be massive, and the competition will be huge. Let's also say 10 people invest into tight spray linen or deep sea satin, and sell it in 8.3 or turn it into tailoring crafts for profit, the supply there will be way less, and also there will hardly be any competition as well. Now I'm not telling you to invest in tailoring as I don't know if it will be profitable, but it's just an example. Thinking outside the box and investing in something different than everyone else is a high risk, high reward kind of thing. And by doing extensive research, you can minimize the risk while keeping the reward factor high. An additional way to make gold right now, specific to Alliance, is the new B faction for the B mount. You can fly around and gather jelly, which you can turn in for reputation. You can also sell this jelly on the auction house, which is where the gold comes in. This presents an excellent flipping opportunity, since you can buy out all of the jelly and resell higher quite easily, but it can also... But it also gives you a farming opportunity, since you can farm these jellies and sell them, however it's not the best gold per hour. My recommendation if you go into farm them is that you do your dailies with them and buy jellies from the auction house to get your reputation up to revered, since that's when you can get an item that displays the jelly deposits on your minimap, and then you start farming them yourself since having them displayed on the minimap is very helpful. The thing about this B faction and B mount is that it was introduced in 8.2.5, so after 8.2 and before 8.3, people who quit retail to play classic still don't have their mount and some people might come back to get it before 8.3 comes out, and that's why now might be a good time to farm or flip these jellies. Additionally, you can probably do this in 8.3 as well, as people will try to complete as much of BFA as possible before Shadowlands comes out, because you don't want to go back to BFA once Shadowlands is out. You can also make a small fortune by taking advantage of the Winter Veil event which is coming up very soon. You can actually sell milk on the auction house because people are too lazy to go to the vendor and buy it themselves, so you can make a ton of gold by simply buying vendor items and auctioning it. You can also make the cookies and sell those. Pay attention to which dailies people are doing, and if you can craft anything that people will buy to speed up the dailies, go ahead and do it. You can also take advantage of the Warlords of Draenor garrisons during the Winter Veil event to try to acquire a minion of Grumpus, which you can sell for a hefty amount of gold. As a final note for BFA, I should also mention that if you have any BOE gear from raids, world drops or crafted gear, this is the time to sell off anything you have left. Since we are expecting 8.3 to arrive in January or early February, most BOE gear from earlier patches will no longer be profitable and will be very difficult to sell. So there it is, a couple of gold making news and hints and tips and stuff and things for both Classic and BFA. I do hope this series helps some of you out and it's just very fun to make and just look at what's selling right now and what's happening in both Classic and BFA that affects the gold making economy. If you do enjoy this series please make sure you leave a comment down below and if there's anything you'd like me to add to the series or if there's anything you'd like to see me do differently let me know. If you did enjoy the video make sure you give that like button a high five, slap the subscribe button and ring the bell. To watch the last video, click the video to the left, and to watch my classic plus video, click the video to the right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.